This is Taumina in Sicily, a Greek and then a Roman town. It was excavated in the golden age of archaeology and you'd think there really wasn't much new to be said about it. But look at those old discoveries harder and a bit differently and you'll find there really are new stories to be told. The world of new technology has had a terrific impact on the field of classics. Well, one thing that the technologies has done has demonstrated, first of all, how much information there is lying around that we can still recapture that we hadn't been aware of before. Also, sadly, I think it has made us aware that uh, we probably have lost quite a lot of information uh, from objects which have been either discarded or ignored in the past or not conserved properly uh, because they weren't thought to contain any information of great value but of course the uh, imaging technologies now uh, can reveal things that we really didn't know were there. There's all kinds of examples where new technology has helped us see new things in old material. I mean 200 years ago when people were first excavating Pompeii they just used to chuck away the animal bones. What sort of town was Pompeii? What was the pattern of its life before the long silence fell? Now we can use those bones to give up all kinds of information about what the Romans ate, how they butchered their cattle. Uh, you can even excavate the cesspits of Pompeii and Herculaneum and find little bits of cuttlefish that have gone through some Roman digestive tract. Boiling volcanic mud bubbled and steamed. The mountains sent forth showers of red hot cinders and rock, bringing death and destruction to Pompeii near the base of the mountain. That was 19 centuries ago. One of the um, techniques that we, we've developed here uh, is called RTI, and that stands for Reflectance Transformation Imaging. The, the equipment that we use for RTI is, is simply a large dome which has LEDs built into it. The camera is taking a picture of this object under a dome as it is lit differently, 76 times by 76 different lights. We have actually thought about the um, issue of how you would get a simple and light portable uh, version of this that you could take into the field and one solution that we've come up with is actually simply to have a light, a camera, a laptop and two black billiard balls which you can move around the object and reflect the light onto the object in a way which simulates what the dome will do too. The idea of developing uh, it started with the notion that uh, the human eye and brain can coordinate in order to read certain kinds of things in ways which demanded a particular focus or a particular light source or a particular perspective on an object. So here we've got a collection of some pretty unimpressive Roman coins. You show me what you can do with them and, okay. and make it simple because I'm not a scientist. Absolutely. So, so what we're doing, what, what RTI does, is we're looking at the shape. Very specifically, we're zooming in, we want to see the topography of what we're looking at, in this case, coins. And how we're going to do that is we're going to do it with light and how light reflects. So essentially, as you know, when raking light hits something at the right angle, it, it lights up certain parts of an object and makes things tend to pop out uh, more. We're, we're trying to take that in and use that for our technology. So you take something like this, where you've got uh, two people, it looks like a Roman emperor and his mum. So the idea is really quite a simple one, isn't it? That, that you know, I look at this coin and actually I can get it, to, I can, just by moving it around, I can get light to mm -hmm. you know, bring up some of the details a bit more um, clearly. But what you're doing is that sort of magnified a hundred times over. You're getting all sorts of different lights. Absolutely. Uh, our, our raking light's going to come from a flash like this. Yeah. And for the computer to, to essentially take in the raking lights, we're going to map them, we're going to use a sphere yeah. like this, and we'll stick it right here. And from then, what we'll do is when we take our set of images with the flash from many different areas, so many different angles, many different raking lights. Yeah. And the sphere right here will get, uh, will, will tell us where the light's coming from, and then the object itself will be lit up in a certain way. And the computer will take that in and be able to map the shape of the coins. We're going to establish, these are a few pieces of Coptic sculpture. Which is so we're getting more information, and since, this, since RTI is creating a, a computer file, we're able to send this file anywhere in the world and someone yeah. else can interact with it like we are doing today. 
what really makes coin so interesting. There's a story that the image tells, but there's also a story of the life of the coin, the whole story. That's wonderful. So I think the technology which we have developed can uh, bring out new material in a variety of ways. One of the ways that you could do it in the field, which has not really been possible to do very effectively or very comprehensively before, is actually to look at the sites themselves and to identify the locations in which particular kinds of objects were found. So that, for example, if you were excavating a house somewhere or a villa, uh, or let's say an archive storage room if you were ever lucky enough to find one, you could actually use this imaging technology to get very detailed information on how the things were found, the archaeological lo location of the object, or how the things were stored, let's say in an archive room or a library. New technology has made us see something invisible to us before. One of the best examples of that is what RTI has done to the tablets that have been discovered near Hadrian's Wall in Britain from the little fort of Vindolanda, the letters and documents of the soldiers that were stationed there 2,000 years ago. Now we've always been able to read a bit of them, but what RTI has done is it's shown us all kinds of other bits that we couldn't read with the naked eye before. So, you know, we hear more of the voices that were writing their letters 2,000 years ago. The Vindolanda tablets produced a whole slew of new information, uh, partly because no material like this had ever been found in northern Britain before. The Romans used stylus tablets, which were uh, blocks of wood with hollowed out centres, and a metal stylus would incise the text on the wax coating. There were a couple of hundred of these things found at Vindolanda, uh, fragments and complete uh, examples. In all cases except one, the wax has perished. In some cases, of course, the tablets have been used more than once, so that we have one text overlaid on top of another. So for the human eye to be able to disentangle these two layers of text is, it is really very difficult, in many cases, to the point of impossibility. But the challenge of technology and scholarship, of course, is to make those less impossible to read. And the point is that you know, this isn't a place for Indiana Jones. Um, this is archaeological discovery, which is making some of those things that we've just ignored in museum basements for centuries tell new stories. One of the spin-offs of this new technology in archaeology is that it brings a whole new generation into the study of the ancient world. And one of the ways in which we know about the Greeks and Romans is thanks to the effort of scholars who sit reading Latin and Greek in the library, and that's very important. But science can offer us all kinds of different ways in. This really is a revolution in our understanding of the ancient world, and it's very exciting for young people. <laughs>